Senior Education Coordinator here at the Central Caribbean Marine Institute and today we are going to be going through how to use the dissection kit and how to undertake a lionfish dissection. So before we actually start cutting into our fish I am going to talk a little bit about health and safety. Now lionfish are venomous fish. They have 18 venomous spines and I'm going to show you where they are on this lovely fish that I have right here. So along the top here on the dorsal fin, we have 13 venomous spines. And then if I flip the fish over like this, we have one on each of the pelvic fins and we have three on the anal fin right here. Now, what is the difference between a venom and a poison? A venom is something that is injected inside of you and a poison is something that you actually have to ingest. So these fish are venomous. Now, this venom is going to cause swelling and it's going to cause pain and in some in extreme circumstances, it can cause some blistering as well. If you are undertaking a lionfish dissection on a fresh fish, whose venom is still active, then please make sure that you keep a container with some hot water close by. And if you do get stabbed by the spine, then I want you to put your hand into the water as hot as you can tolerate, because that will help denature the venom because it is protein based. If your fish has been in the freezer, then that venom will have actually become denatured as well, and it won't be as active. Now, I still want you to be careful when you're undertaking the dissection, because as we can see from our fish here, these spines are still really, really sharp, and you are going to cause a puncture wound in your finger. So do just be nice and careful, and just be aware of where all the spines are actually on the fish. Now, before we get started with the dissection, we are actually going to go through why lionfish are such a problem here. Now, lionfish are an invasive species. This means that they have come to an environment and they are having a detrimental impact on it. Lionfish are originally from the Indo-Pacific region which is very, very far away from the Caribbean Sea. So how did they actually get here? Well, we think the main reason that they got into the waters around the Caribbean is via the aquarium trade, where people have had them as pets and then they have disposed of them because they didn't want to have them anymore um, and they have ended up in our waters. Now, because they can reproduce so effectively, these lionfish can produce up to 2 million eggs a year. Their population spread exponentially because their eggs were transported in the currents in this region. And now they are a huge problem here. So aside from them being able to reduce really quickly, they can also basically eat anything inside. They are not very specific when it comes to their diet which is why they're having such a bad impact here. The smaller lionfish tend to feed on a variety of invertebrates and from doing lionfish dissections here, they seem to prefer feeding on small shrimps. And then the larger lionfish are going to be eating fish that we find on the coral reefs. So they're really having a huge impact by predating upon a wide range of species and are reducing down their numbers. So, aside from eating everything on the reef, we'll also find them in many different locations because they are extremophores. So they can survive in very, very deep water, they can survive in shallow water, and in a range of temperatures. So that's why they've been so successful in being in so many different locations and having this negative environmental impact. So this is my basic explanation about lionfish. And what we're going to do now is we are actually going to go through and we're going to start our dissection. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first of all is I am going to reduce the risk of actually stabbing myself with some of these spines and I am going to remove 
the venomous spines along the top of the dorsal fin right here. Now you can see from my hand on this side, I'm holding the fish by putting my fingers inside of its mouth. This is because there are no spines in this region and all of the sp spines are pointing back away from me. So this is keeping this hand nice, safe and secure and also gives me a really good grip on the fish so that I can move it around. So what I'm gonna do first of all, as I said, is start cutting these spines. Now, when we're cutting the spines, we are gonna be careful because as you can see, the spines right here are relatively close to my hand. So I'm just gonna be keeping a really good eye on them and I'm going to see and make sure that they're not getting too close to me. So you can see it's a little bit tricky, but we can work our way through it. Get these final ones right here. Perfect. And then what I'm gonna do with these spines is I'm actually gonna pick them up with my scissors. I'm not gonna be picking them up with my hands because otherwise they may accidentally spine me. And I'm just gonna put them in this nice corner over here. Now I've only actually removed the top spines, but remember there are 18 venomous spines. So I am going to come underneath the fish here and I'm going to remove the remaining venomous spines, which are these ones here that are on the pelvic fins. There's one there. And the other one right there. Okay. And now we're gonna to come to the final ones that we have right here. With these anal fins, do remember that the venomous spines are actually closer to the head than the tails. Do be careful when you are cutting them. Perfect, and they have all been nice and removed. So now I have a lionfish that does not have any venomous spines on it. Do be careful, there may still be some fragments inside of here. So do try not to hit your hand too hard on the top, otherwise it may still cause you to be penetrated by the spine. Okay, so what we're gonna do now to make our dissection easier is to using our scissors, actually remove the pectoral fins that we have here. So these ones are a little bit tougher to cut off. So just do it as best as you can with the scissors that you've been given. And we're going to do the other side now as well. Okay, so now I have a fish that doesn't have any fins on it and is perfect for dissection. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to make our initial cut coming through the anus of the fish down here. So you'll see there's a little hole down here and I am just going to cut all the way along using my scissors. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to come along here and I am going to make a cut, which is just next to where I've just cut the pectoral fins off. And I'm gonna cut up as far up as I can. And this has allowed me to open up the fish. And we can see all of the internal organs inside of here. If we take this stick that has a nice spine on the end of it here, I'm actually just going to push that into the fish and this holds it nice and open for us so that we can see all of the internal organs and we're going to start looking at those now. So what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, have a look at all of this white substance that we have right here. Now this is actually the fatty tissue inside of the fish. And we are just gonna kind of try and pull that away and remove that a little bit so we can see some of the other things that we're finding in there. Now what I find really useful when you're doing a dissection is to keep all of the different things that you've taken out in different piles. It means that your students will be able to look at it and analyze all the different things that we're finding inside of the fish. Now if we come up here, then what we're going to start looking at is we're going to start looking at the gonads inside of here or the reproductive organs. I'm just gonna have to turn this fish around so I can actually see them. So I'm gonna take my scissors or you can take your scalpel 
and you can kind of cut away some of this connective tissue, which is gonna make it much easier for you to actually be able to get to all of the things underneath. Now, if we look right here, so this behind, this white organ, this is actually the swim bladder, which is controlling the buoyancy of the fish. Now, on either side of this swim bladder, we are going to find, as I said earlier, the reproductive organs. And we can see here that this is a male because once I cut this out and show you, it is relatively small compared to what you would find in the female. So if we look here, this is a male lionfish, very, very, very small reproductive organ. The females is gonna be much larger than this and you'll be able to cut it open you may be able to fill some of the eggs inside so there are two of those one on either side of the gas bladder we're just going to take that one out for the time being now we come back to our fish our gas bladder is a lot easier to see so we look here this white organ what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it out as best as i can so we can actually have a look at that as well now you'll notice that I actually prefer to use the scissors rather than using the scalpel, but it is completely up to you what you want to use during your dissections. I personally feel like I have a lot more control using the scissors, but if you want to use the scalpel as well, then you're more than welcome to. And we have a look here. We can see this swim bladder, which as I said before, is helping to control the buoyancy. That's a very, very important part of the fish. It's gonna lay that down here as well. Now the next thing we're gonna look at, we're actually going to ignore a lot of the digest digestive tissue that's inside of here. Um, and look, you can see a lot more fat deposits in here as well. And we're just gonna go straight to looking at the stomach and see if we can find anything inside of it. Now, the easiest way for you to find the stomach is to actually stick your finger through the fish and you can actually feel it on the other side. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to make a cut where you can feel your finger. And then you are hopefully going to be able to cut out all of these tissues and sort out the stomach from them. So if I come like this and I start cutting some of this apart, by getting rid of this connective tissue. We are going to find the stomach that is right here. So you can see the stomach, stomach sac. It's not too big, but you know, you may still be able to find something inside of it. The key thing is finding that structure that is relatively solid and hard compared to the rest of the organs that we have here. And then you know that you've actually found the stomach itself. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut open this stomach and I'm going to see what I can find on the inside. Now it is relatively slippery, so do just take some nice gentle cuts and then the best thing to do is cut all the way along its length and then try and reverse it and see if you can find anything on the inside. So I've reversed the stomach on my finger there and we can see from our stomach that there actually isn't anything inside of it to my knowledge. So this lionfish was obviously a little bit hungry and was probably on its way to eat some food before it was speared on the reef. So nothing inside the stomach, unfortunately, but you may actually find whole fish inside of there sometimes. And if you do, you can look online and try to identify them. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to move away from the inside of the fish, and we're actually going to look at the gills of the fish. So once again, I've got my finger inside of the mouth and I'm pulling back the fish. We can see the gill structures all inside of here. I'm just gonna come along. I'm going to take, do a nice cut here. And then I'm able to pull that open and you should be able to see those gill structures nice and effectively. If I take one of these out, then we can see here on one side are the gill rakers which acts to you know, keep food actually going down through the esophagus and into the stomach. And on the other side, 
We have the gill filaments here, which is where um, oxygen is being pushed into the bloodstream. I'm gonna leave this right here. And what I'm gonna go on to now is actually looking at the heart. So as we think about us as humans, we are, have one organ next to our lungs and that is going to be our heart. So if we think about fish, it's very likely they're gonna have their heart next to their lungs or their gills as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cut right through here. And we're gonna cut all the way down and we should be able to find the heart, which is this dark organ that's right inside of here. So really, really close to the gills. And if you want to, you can cut that out as well. It is a little bit tricky, but you should be able to get some of the tissue out. So here is some of the heart tissue that we have right here. So yeah, looks relatively small, but in terms of body proportion, it's pretty much the same as our heart and our body. So we've gone through most of our organs and the final thing that we're going to look at is going to be the eye that we have right here. And we are going to push open the eye and we can actually have a look at the lens inside of the eye. So I've made a nice cut there and I'm just trying to prise the lens of the eye out. And that's just coming out right here. And we can see that our lens is actually a circle rather than concave like our lenses are. So it's very different looking in fish than it is in humans. So this is actually all of the organs that we are gonna go through today. There are obviously several more inside, but these are the key ones that I want us all to look at. So before we finish, the final thing that we're going to do is we are actually going to measure the length of this fish. So you can use the ruler that you got inside your teacher pack. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna place this underneath the fish like this. Now we are not going to be measuring the whole length of the fish. We're going to be measuring it from here all the way up to its mouth at the tip. So we are not using the final part of the caudal or the tail fin right here. So I'm actually going to line this up very nicely. I'm gonna make sure that my lionfish's mouth is closed, otherwise it's gonna increase its length. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna use the end of my stick right here, I'm just gonna line this up with the mouth and I am going to look at the length, which for me is 21.4 centimeters. So a relatively large lionfish that we've got right here. Okay guys, that is it for our video that we're going to be doing today. I hope you've all learned something new and you can go and undertake some really cool lionfish dissections in your classrooms. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.